Ready. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the fourth webinar in the Disability Inclusion Training Series organized by the High Impact uh, United Nations Business Operations Strategy team. Uh, we're, we're, we're happy to be uh, with you here today. Uh, my name is Heba Khalif and I have here uh, my colleague, uh, Luis Diego, he is, who is a, a, a great help and support during these presentations. And we have here as well our colleague uh, from Mont uh, Montenegro. Um, she's working at the UNICEF. Um, uh, so welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, and this webinar will cover ICT, creating accessible office documents and with a br brief overview of assistive technology. So I want to give you a little introduction about myself. Um, my name is Heba Khalif. I am based in Alexandria, Egypt. Um, I'm a person with visual impairment myself, so I'm an assistive technology user, screen reader user. Um, I have a master's degree from the University of Birmingham in uh, inclusive education. And I've worked uh, for 20 years in the field of digital accessibility, website ass assessment and disability inclusion. I've worked in both national and international organizations in Egypt, um, helping institutions to start up their assistive technology training. Um, and also I worked with a number, as I said, a number of uh, international organizations such as the German International Development Agency um, uh, or the GIZ. And also I worked uh, for the FAO uh, HQ uh, in, uh, in order to assess their digital tools and also the FAO um, Middle East and uh, North Africa region in order to assess their digital platforms as well. And currently I'm supporting UNDCO, um, a business operations strategy team, and uh, uh, regarding the disability inclusion uh, main core areas that we are going to speak about in a moment. So in the next slide, I know it's seven of us, of us so it's a it's a very good opportunity to to interact and to make this training more hands-on uh, so i'd like you to if you could share with us um uh, your expectations for the workshop what are your main expected outcomes from the workshop please feel free to um uh, write down in the chat or raise your virtual hand and we will uh, you will be have a, you will have a chance to uh share your main learning, expected learning outcomes. Hello colleagues, this is Luis Diego, and this is just a great opportunity to see if there's anything that specifically you would like to learn that isn't covered already in the agenda that we could either cover now or kind of provide the resources and follow up to, to be able to provide that um, knowledge or those questions that you may have. So I don't see any hands up. Um, or anything in the chat yet, but let us know if anything comes up. Um, we can cover. You know, Heva has prepared a very extensive agenda for today, and we'll cover that. And you can ask questions as we go as well. All right. Um, so let's move to the agenda. And the agenda, we will start by giving an introduction about disability and accessibility, and then we will cover uh, yeah, the definition of information access, website accessibility, and a brief uh, overview about assistive technology. Um, with the hands-on experience, um, using a screen reader, navigating different documents, how to uh, make a document accessible and in inaccessible. Uh, how to make the inaccessible documents or turn inaccessible documents into accessible alternatives. And we will uh, uh, conclude with experience from the field, uh, sharing the Montenegro uh, experience in ICT uh, assessments and their next steps in order to provide more inclusive ICT um, work uh, workplace. So in the next slide, let me give you a brief overview about the high impact services and the high common uh, high common services. They are in line with the 2030 um, sustainable agenda uh, SDG and um, it, 
the 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 high impact services they are 10 to 15 high impact services um, they uh, evolve around a number of components and the first component is cost efficient or cost efficient cost avoidance so uh, our aim is to provide the 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 a good quality service with um, the the most cost avoidance approaches possible and um, uh, without compromising the quality. So we're aiming to improve the quality of services uh, through increasing service delivery in speed and quality and volume. Um, uh, one uh, Another service uh, also uh, focuses on good practices, leveraging entity expertise, sharing and upscaling the resources uh, uh, produced by the different UN entities uh, in order to uh, improve service delivery and uh, and don't we, we don't seek to reinvent the wheel, as they say. The third area is uh, disability inclusion and in the disability inclusion component we have three main core areas the inclusive hr and the inclusive ict and physical accessibility and in the uh, following area the gender uh, inclusion we have a number of components as well uh, we we could focus on gender parity responsive procurement and psea um, uh, in the environment um, sustainability area, we focus on two main aspects, uh, which are renewable energy and uh, decarbonization. Um, so in, in the next slide, we are going to cover we're going to cover more about the disability, disability basics. As you may know, there are 1 billion persons with disabilities with, with disabilities worldwide, 80 to 90 percent of which are of working age. And unfortunately, they are unemployed or they face unemployability. And this is due to the existence of institutional, environmental and attitudinal barriers. And by environmental barriers, we mean the physical environment and the digital environment, which we will be focusing on today, the digital environment. So disability always results from the interaction between a physical, sensory, mental impairments and the existing barrier barriers in, 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 in the in, in environment. So in the next slide, uh, let's talk a little bit about accessibility. What is accessibility? So accessibility is the ability or, or for something to or the quality of being usable, reachable, obtainable and the quality of being suitable and adaptable for use by people with different abilities and needs. Uh, for example, persons with disability. So the quality of being easy to approach, reach, enter, speak with, use or um, uh, or understand. And this, of course, apply to the physical environment and the digital environment, as we will soon see. The next slide, it contains a video. Unfortunately, because I'm very mindful of the time, we cannot show this video right now, but this video explains the relationship between disability and accessibility. Uh, it shows a city that uh, everyone in the city uh, have a visual impairment, so they are all using Braille books. Uh, or a city where everyone is are, uh, in the city are wheelchair users, so everyone is using ramps. Or a city where everyone is just uh, using sign language, so anyone who are not able to read in Braille or use sign language or um, are not uh, able to use wheelchair wheelchairs uh, are not being able to will not be able to access this, this city. So I really encourage you to see it at your own time. Uh, the next slide talks about information access and it covers the same concept about accessibility that we discussed earlier. Um, uh, it's uh, users with different abilities and needs should be able to identify and retrieve information and use information effectively and equitably uh, ex uh, uh, on an equal basis with persons without disabilities. So it's very uh, it's very significant for information to be accessible uh, because it's relevant to the social and political and economic advancements of, uh, of everyone. Um, the next slide we will uh, talk about, uh, you, as you can see here, uh, in Article 2 of the CRPD discusses the accessible communication. 
And as you can see, the, this uh, the article uh, showcases different uh, modes of communications used by different uh, individuals. Not just uh, the written or spoken uh, language, and uh, as you can see, uh, um, as you can see, uh, the 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 article um, stresses on the importance of delivering the information in 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 every means, uh, in every way possible that would enable persons with disabilities to access. In the next slide. Um, here you have, we have, we will talk about three components of accessibility, uh, three essential components, which are um, people, technology and standards and guidelines. So first of all, people are technology developers and technology users. So it's very important to, uh, to develop or, or to adopt a user centric approach when designing and developing documents, uh, websites, uh, social media posts, we have to think of the users when we are developing any content. And also for programmers and, and, and website, website designers and technology developers themselves, they have also to adopt a more accessible uh, approach uh, or a more user-centric approach when they are developing their documents. And the, the other component uh, is the technology being used. This is the second uh, main component because um, we all use different kinds of technologies. We sometimes we can use uh, personal computers, cell phones, and different operating systems with different web browsers, different word processors and other uh, applications. So we have to make sure that this technology is accessible and is usable by everyone. And the other thir uh, the third component is the standards and the guidelines. And there are many agencies worldwide who are specialized in creating uh, standards and guidelines uh, to ensure the accessibility of the digital content like the WAI or the uh, Web Accessibility Initiative. Now in the, in the next slide, we will talk about web accessibility. Um, I'm sorry about this uh, background noise. Uh, we, we are talking about web accessibility. As you know, web is generally designed to be used by everyone, young people, uh, older persons, persons with disabilities, persons who uh, who are uh, browsing in a language that is their second language, not their first language, um, persons with uh, uh, low levels of literacy. So the website has to be really accessible and it revolves under, uh, it has four principles, the web accessibility. Um, websites has to be have to be perceivable, um, uh, understandable, uh, um, and navigable and uh, uh, and robust. Uh, uh, sorry, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. As we will see, and we will explain all these principles later on um, when we are talking about um, when we have the hands-on experience. So, in this website, uh, sorry, in the in the next exercise. I'd like you without using your mouse, I'd like you to navigate or, or trackpad. I'd like you to navigate to your favorite website, visit your favorite website and use the tab key to move between any focusable items like links, buttons, form fields and use the up and down arrow to select um, to select uh, between option buttons or radio buttons as uh, as they are called. Uh, use the space bar to check or uncheck any kind of checkbox that you might find. So I leave you uh, two or three minutes to visit your uh, favorite website and uh, please share with us your experience. And to resist any temptation to use your trackpad as an instinct. Hello. Yes. yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, so we're just supposed to use the top button. The top key, you know, the top key in your keyboard. Yes. Top. Yeah. Yeah. You're not supposed to use the mouse or the trackpad. Just the keyboard. M tap or up and down arrow, left and right and space bar and enter. To activate the links, like if you want to activate any link, you just use enter. 
<laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, and I, I tell Heva, it's, it's not easy even with the ability to see, like if you couldn't even see where the tab is selecting or how many menus there are, it's that much harder to know where to go, how many tabs you have to press to get to where you want to go and to navigate and scroll. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, I can give you my feedback now. It's, it's <laughs> like you're trying to figure out which tab and how to get. It's very difficult for me. It's, <laughs> yeah, so. Yes, especially that some websites, they have the visual focus uh, or the visual um, uh, the, the visible focus is different from the logical focus or the or, or the tab focus. Like you can see the page uh, visually um, ordered in a way, but when you press the tab key, the the arrow doesn't follow the vi the visible focus. It moves the the the, the cursor to um, to to the totally different area in the web in the website or on the web page. So that makes it even more difficult because you will be trying to look for the cursor. Where did it go if it's not following the visible order of the page? It's very difficult because I can't even go to the. To the what do you call it to the search bar. Yes, and some websites to change if, the, to change the web web page. Yeah. So I'm lost in the in you the can page. press alt alt D together. This will take you to the address bar. Ah, OK. That if you would like good. me to tell you any shortcut keys, please feel free and I will do so. OK. Uh, hi, Heba. Uh, it would be great maybe to uh, give us, you know, like to write all these uh, shortcuts, you know, that you are using, you know, that we can share with our colleagues as well, you know. Sure. So yeah. in order to go to the address bar, you press Alt plus D, use the backspace to delete the, 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 the address of yeah. the website that you're currently having, and then type in the address that you would like to visit mm -hmm. and just press enter. And then your the web page will start going to the website that you want to visit. You are right, Sekha. I think there's many shortcuts yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. and different shortcuts for different programs. I know Teams has a, a whole set of their own shortcuts that if you have any documents that you can share later, even persons with visual impairments, they may not know one program from the other sometimes. So so if there is anything we can see, we can share it as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but these are the shortcut keys that are used in the Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome for navigating to the address bar. OK, would you like to have some more time navigating or would you like me to show you how to navigate a website using using a screen user? Yes, please show us, you know, we already established that it's quite hard, you know, like and especially when you start from the beginning, it goes every, you know, tab by tab. If he has, I don't know how many, how many links there, it's going to go by one by one. So, you know, and plus if it's not uh, the description of the link, it's not written properly, then I guess you will not know where are you, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. OK, yeah. just let me uh, I, I'll, I'll need just a little bit of time to share my screen and just as a screen reader. So if you just give me some moments, that would be great. And I was telling Heva how, how much we take for granted so many things from screenshots to graphs um, to so many other visuals that we use that for a person with a visual impairment, it becomes practically impossible to know what's on there. Um, in some cases, even with alternative text, you can't describe the I'm whole sharing. Forward it has attachment. Yeah. So oh, I'm sharing my screen and probably you cannot see anything in my screen because it's black. Mm -hmm. 
OK, so I'm going to navigate to my favorite website using my screen reader. Um, and I want you to try to figure out what I'm doing uh, using uh, just listening to the screen reader. OK, so I'm going to open something. Dialog Run dialog type the name of a program, folder, document or Internet resource and Windows will open it for you. Open combo box collapsed. Edit Alt plus O selected www.google.com. So I opened the run dialog box, which is a, 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 the easiest way to open any website. Um, I use a shortcut key, Windows key plus R to open the run box. And then I will type in uh, the website. www.bbc.co.uk And I will go ahead and press enter. Desktop list. BBC Home Profile 1 Microsoft Edge Window. Banner Landmark BBC Navigation. Still loading. Loading complete. So as you can see, the screen reader is even uh, um, announcing the percentage of the of the of the loading of the page. If it's still loading, if the loading is complete, so that the users would know um, that when the loading is complete, they can browse the page. So I'll go ahead and press the tab key. Clickable BBC wide banner landmark list with two items. Skip to content link. So the first thing I have is very important for web accessibility, which is a skip to main content link. Every website has a number of navigation links, which is repeated in all the pages of the website. So if the website doesn't have a skip to main content link, users will have to listen to all the navigation uh, links over and over again whenever they uh, enter any page on the website. But with the skip to main content link, I will I will be able to press enter on that and it will move me directly to the main body of the page, which I will go ahead and do. So out of list main yeah. landmark heading level two. Welcome to BBC.com Thursday, November 17th list graphic emergency workers climb across a huge pile of rubble heading level three link Ukrainian gas plant hit in latest Russian strikes. At least four deaths are reported days after one of the most fierce Russian bombardments of the war. Link Europe graphic Justin Trudeau and Xi Jinping have an awkward exchange at the G20 summit heading level three link. She criticizes Trudeau in awkward exchange at G20 link China graphic missile fragments heading level three link. So it will go ahead and start. We'll start reading the pieces of news that I have are, are available on the BBC website. The good thing about this web uh, website is that the, the website is structured into headings and subheadings with different heading levels. And this is very, very important for users who are using screen readers because um, because that will enable them to get an overview about how the page is structured and also to move quickly between the headings with uh, uh, to choose the, the the heading the particular heading that they want to navigate or to read without having to listen to all the uh, the, the content of the page using the up and down arrow. I'm going to use the H shortcut key, which is the designated shortcut key to move between the headings. So I'll go ahead and press H. List with five items. Ukrainian gas plant hit in latest Russian strikes link heading level three. So this is one piece of news. She criticizes Trudeau in awkward exchange at G20 link heading level three. And this is another one. Searching for clues about Poland missile strike link heading level three. So all the text in between those headings, I'm not going to read. I'm skipping it and just go directly to the headings. And I can um, because this, this website is designed in a way that uh, the code of the HTML itself is 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 developed in a uh, or built in an accessible uh, way. I can move on between the different page elements, like to to the to the tables, to the lists, to the uh, to to the, to all the links. All the links are labeled. All the images have alternative text, so it is very 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 accessible. I'm going to move ahead, move move to another uh, document, and uh, I want you to try to figure out what's going on in this document without seeing it. Inbox have a inclusive ICT, PowerPoint slide, digital accessibility, Heba. accessible and inaccessible yes, slide. Sure. Be before you navigate away, would you let us know what we were seeing just so that we can get an idea of how uh, sorry, difficult it is to, to kind of get sure. an idea just by listening? And I know that because you're using the screen reader so much, you maybe sped up the, the reading um, pace or velocity speed, um, accessible which is something that we do when we watch clickable. videos sometimes, but um, it's it goes fast, right? 
Yeah, but you can slow it down and you can move, you can even do it faster than this, but I like it mm -hmm. to be fast so I can, uh, right. because the screen reader usually uh, for, it's a very good, uh, your your comment is very, very good because um, usually people who are screen reader users take double the time the cited, uh, the cited persons take into navigating any document or reading any document. So that's why I like to make the screen reader fast, as fast as I, as I, as I can. Okay. Let One me... reminder. Word test, Excel training, digital, power, inclusive, uh, inbox have BBC homepage. I have loads of windows opened. Let me um, remove the screen curtain. NVDA menu. Preferences sub menu settings. F NVDA settings. Speech 2 of 15. Braille 3 of vision 4. Vision pro highlight system focus. Highlight navig. Highlight browse mode curse. Screen curtain grouping. Make space. All place. OK. Cancel button. OK. But BBC homepage profile. So that's the BBC. That's the website that I was navigating. Um, do you think it was different than what you have imagined when I was using the screen reader? Was it so difficult? You felt it was difficult when I was navigating the website? Or, or, or would, did you have a chance to get a feel of how the page is structured just from using the screen reader? It was quite hard, but you know, like I, I was trying to imagine with this um, subheading three, you know, like to visualize it, but it's not like this. Definitely, it's far from from what I imagine imagined in in the moment when I was hearing what uh, the reader was saying. And yeah, it was too but, fast, yeah. and it was really fast, you know, like right? it, it was very hard to pick up everything. Okay. And yeah. I try to make it slow. <laughs> yeah. Not in a table cell. App bar tool. Rate 90. Rate 9. Rate 100. Rate 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 50. Rate 45. Okay, so let me put the screen shade again. And NVDA menu. Show you another document, and this will take preferences us to, sub menu. Uh, this will take us to creating office documents. Settings. F NVDA settings. General. Speech two of Braille th vision for vision high highlight highlight browse mode screen curtain group space I'll place at OK but BBC homepage. So I will move to the to a Word document. One remind Word Excel trick Word test Word. And I will move to the top of the page. Indicator six accessibility. So that's the first line. Indicator six accessibility. I'll go ahead and press down arrow. Embedded object. And that's what the screen reader says, embedded object. I'll go ahead and, and press down arrow again. Blank. This is a blank line. Blank. This is another blank line. Slash. And this is, I don't know, it says slash. Thursday, November 17th, 2022. It's, now it pronounces the date. Blank. Page two slash. And then in the page two, it has some, it says something like slash, which I don't know what it is. Page three rating and slash A. It says rating and slash A. Blank. Justification. The N slash rating was selected as no comprehensive accessibility baseline assessment was. Now it's reading. Conducted. In order to approach requirement, the assessment must cover common premises, ICT, communication, transportation, and emergency an initial. So let me move to a different part of a document. A dig a pre blank suggest conduct using create. I'm pressing control down arrow to move by paragraph. Indi rating. Which interview blank indi a present column column for column column out of table page a pre page break table with 11 rows and 13 columns level one row one column one page five style table grid indicator soon i have i, I have a table and as you uh, can hear it has something like 11 columns and 10 and uh, 10 rows and i'm trying to move uh, through this table uh, using the screen reader and i will just go ahead and press the down arrow row two indicator one Row three indicator, two. Row five indicator, three. So whenever I press the down arrow, 
the screen reader is just reading the the, the first column, the, the cells in the first on the first column. It it doesn't give me a, an overview about what is in the second column, what is in the third column, what is in the fourth column. This table has, I think, ten columns. So as you can imagine, it's quite difficult for 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 users who are screen reader users to use a screen reader uh, and with the documents with very complex kind of table and and also this table has something called split cells and merged cells which makes it even more harder or harder for screen reader users to navigate so i'm going to go ahead and turn my screen shade off or um uh, so that you can see the document and I will show you an, another accessible version of the same document that you were hearing. NVDA menu. Preferences sub settings. S. NVDA settings. General. Norm. Speech 2 of 15. Braille 3 of vision 4. Vision. Highlights. Highlight. Highlight brow. Screen curtain. Space. All. Place. OK button. Word test doc. So. Out of table. This is the document, and the first uh, line is, as you can see, indicator one or something. Embedded object. This is this is an object containing a chart, uh, an organizational chart, uh, which Emma? is inserted. Yes. Could you maximize the window so we could see it clearly? It's it's a bit small. Restore sure. close C. Maximize. Word test doc. Can you see this? Yes, can you see a little better. Okay. Yeah, and if you okay. could zoom in, I'm not sure if it's possible. Oh, uh, I really don't know how to do that. If you um, press Control plus, plus, I don't know if you know. I know, but um, it's okay. Super script. It's fine. We can see. Control plus, Control plus. Just let me. Carriage return. I'm not sure what's doing really. It's um, pressing enter. Break. It's fine. I think it's fine as it is. Indicator six accessibility. Trying to zoom in, but it doesn't work because remember, this is the free screen reader, so it's giving me a hard time. So um, page break embedded object page two. Can you see the, the object that has the chart, the organizational chart? We did. It went to the second page, so there's a blank yeah, page. Yeah, there's a the blank type. page. Yeah, I want to show you something here in blank, this line. Blank slash. This is a text box. But because this text box was not labeled correctly, the screen reader, all the screen reader, it says is slash. So all you have to do is right click on that and you will have an, uh, uh, an icon called view all text. Let me do that. Let me. Cut unavailable, copy, font, paragraph, block, all, search, synonym, read aloud, translate, link, split button, oh, didn't, micro. Didn't do it. Slash selected, layout, cut, cut. Copy, edit, edit points, not edit text, edit text. Yeah, you have an edit text um, icon. Oh, and if you press enter on that, it is going to open a little box that you can type in the alternative text that the screen reader will then pick up and announce it when the users navigate to this text box. I'm not going, unfortunately, I'm not going to go ahead and open that because the screen reader, the free screen reader freezes whenever I try to do that using this free screen reader. So I'm not going to do that. But I'm, I'm sure you, you had an idea. Microsoft okay. Word document and tool data grid with. Page two, section one, style normal Thursday, November 17, blank. Page three slash page four rating and slash A. Did you do you notice something in this line? I mean, it's a different color. Is that it? Yes, yes, it's one? a different color. And of course, that screen is not going to pick it up, but I have another accessible part page of the documents here. Let me quickly blank. Style list paragraph black square interviews can blank page nine rating approaches required heading level one style heading one blank heading level two style heading two suggest a presentation page eight slash page nine blank justification the style blank blank page eight slash page Thursday November blank page eight slash Page nine blank blank justification the style intense quote char n slash a style normal rate. Do you notice that N A are now I used a, a style called emphasis quote 
um, or sorry, intense intense code, and the screen reader is going to pick up on that and will tell me that this NA word is written differently, uh, using a different style. So I can now understand that you are trying to distinguish this uh, word from the other from the other text. So all you have to do is just select. Um, the word that you want to use and then press Control plus Shift plus S, you'll open the styles dialog box and then you can choose um, the strong style instead of bold, use the intense uh, style, intense code style instead of, uh, you know, of highlighting a word or using it in by only italics, italicized or using it in a different color because this is the screen reader is going to pick up on using those different styles. And as you can see in this document, I make it in into order to headings. An initial, a digit, a press see? blank, heading level two style, heading two suggested action plan. So I made all the indicators into a heading one using the same shortcut key, control uh, shift S and then selecting H1 style. And then all the, the, the any, anything under that I moved as uh, made as heading level two and so on. So in the, in the other screen reader, which I'm not using right now, unfortunately, it provides me an option to use something called quick keys, just like a website, as if I'm browsing a website. Uh, so all the keyboards are not going to type in any letters, but uh, are going to do some functions. So I would be able to move to the headings using the letter H. I would be able to moving to all the lists using the letter L. It would be moving through all the paragraphs using the letter P. So it makes it a lot easier. Uh, do you have any questions before we move to another document? Will you be talking about creating the headings in the next document, Hella? Well, I, I, I didn't I say that? I'm oh, sorry. That. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I mean, it just, I guess, kind of seeing the navigation pane, how that would be different if, sure, if it's sure. there or if it isn't. Sure. And I guess the hey, way that I understand it is... Status bar, status bar, word count. I, I'm just a little bit... Pain. Uh, Microsoft Not sure Word. about the screen reader. Status bar, status bar. It's gonna work. Ribbon tabs, tab. Microsoft Word document edit multi-line heading level two, page nine, section one. St yeah, I don't know. Status bar, Would status. Would you like me to navigate ribbon. to it? Yes, I'm please. Uh, control? Okay, so yeah, I'm just, just let me. No, no, please wait. I, okay. I have to go to the meeting. BBC Home, Microsoft then... Team, accessible and inbox ham, inclusive ICT, creating a clickable meeting view. Yes, can you please request control? Yeah. Let me know if you can see it. And if not, um, it's it's okay. I think it was clear. And the way that I understand it is the headings and the subheadings are improperly labeled as styles. And it's really hard to navigate a document. Imagine navigating a 10, 20 page document where the screen reader has to go line by line or you have to kind of navigate up and down without really knowing unless you have it memorized, which hardly it ever happens. Um, Stop it's really hard but if you want to go to the first page, knowing which page it is um, and which part of the document you're on. Um, so it's OK, Hello, we can we can move to the next. Yeah. Can we? OK, yeah. so I'll move to the Excel then. Uh, Excel documents, how they can be access inaccessible. And, uh, Inclusive word test, BBC home, accessible and inaccessible. Oh, but let me first. Um, Inclusive IC. Inclu do the screen shade again. NVDA menu, preferences, sub settings. S, NVDA settings, general, speech two of fifth, braille, th vision, vision, highlights, highlight, Highlight screen curtain grouping space always play sound when OK button inclusive I seat access word BBC inbox power digital Excel training sheet one tick. So I now have an Excel file and th the first thing that the screen reader pronounced sheet one, which is the default name for any sheets worksheets created by Excel. And these kind of generic names do not really give users an idea about what the sheet is about. So it's very essential to right click on the sheet and rename it to a different, uh, more uh, explanatory name. Style normal, a one. 
So the first cell, usually that the screen reader move to whenever I open any Excel sheets, it, it does one of two options, either move to the A1 cell or move to the last data cell on the sheet. So if the A1 is blank, I wouldn't be able to find where the cell, where is this, the data will start. So I have an A1 and it's blank. So I go ahead and move with the right arrow to the next column. B1. And I have B1. It's blank as well. If if it were, if it had text, it would have read it. C1, D1, E1, F1, G1, H1, I1, J1, K1, L1. So as you can see, um, I'm unable to find L2. the place that the designated place for me to fill in any kind of data. Okay, a let two, me a three, a f a move nine. to another sheet. Now it's the screen either freezes. Uh, Heba, can I ask something until you... Uh... Until um, it works, sure. No, no, until it starts working. Uh, uh, it's actually about the, the this technology as a uh, screen reader. Inclusive ICT, uh, creating accessible office. Sorry, sorry. Yes, please go ahead. Um, I mean, that's the separate uh, application, right? Or software that we have to procure, right? Because you said yeah. that this is the yeah. free one. I mean, you know, like, uh, and we want to have the these things, you know, ready for colleagues who may come tomorrow to need it. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of preference? The, because I understood that there are different types of the screen readers, right? Yes, there's a there's a free screen reader. It's called NVDA, um, and you can go to the website uh, www.nvdaaccess.org. But as you can see, the free screen reader has a, a lot of shortcomings. Uh, it doesn't work very well with PowerPoint presentations or Excel sheets. It doesn't work very well with Teams. Uh, it doesn't work very well with um, SharePoint. So I uh, there, and it's a personal preference after all, like you would find a lot of uh, hey. people in the uh, younger Toolbar. generation who would prefer using the NVDA and people would it prefer using JAWS toolbar. I don't know what the screen reader is doing. Um, Series, tool. But but generally, uh, you would want to buy the Pain. the professional screen reader, which is called Jaws Jaws for Windows from Freedom Scientific, uh, which is going to give you a more optimum and more professional performance. And the last version is twenty twenty three. Thank you so much. Inclusive ice. Uh, okay. I'm Excel gonna... training. Excel training sheet. Dot xlsx Excel. Um, I was wondering, uh, Diego, if you can please request control because uh, uh, let me let me because the screen reader freezes. Uh, it doesn't want to move to this to the to the sheet I prepared. But mainly the Excel sheet that I prepared, it had a lot of merged cells. It had a lot of head and columns and rows, it had uh, the data starting uh, and written in different inconsistent parts of the sheet. I had the sheet uh, protected and locked so the, 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 that users with uh, screen reader users are not able to fill in the data. As you can see, the screen reader freezed because the sheet is protected. And I will now... Um, um, NVDA uh, on, um, preferences turn the screen curtain off. So exit that... preferences sub settings. F NVDA settings. Speech two of fifteen. Braille th vision four. Include calling indicators toolbar. Encrypt meeting controls. Excel training accessible and word test BBC inbox head inbox. So you see, this is one of the shortcomings of the free screen reader. I was trying to open the settings of the screen reader to make the screen curtain off, and then it it auto, it uh, automatically changed the cursor to another window, which is the team window. So that's why you heard the screen reader saying inclusive HR, uh, inclusive ICT, because it it automatically changed the windows. NVDA menu, preference settings, NVDA settings. General speech two of fifth braille vision vision highlight 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 screen curtain space all 
place okay but inbox so you can imagine how frustrating it, it is for a user uh who wants to work on office documents or inclusive um, or or excel sheets or powerpoint presentation and find that the screen reader is freezing every now and then because that's why the commercial screen reader is very very important inbox excel training so that's the excel sheets i was trying to make i don't know if you can see any data on the sheet add element available toolbar excel no, training sheet dot excel excel pardon the graph is empty add element yeah. toolbar yeah it has a it, it has a graph right it charts with no data so it's blank toolbar yes it, it, it has no data but toolbar it's, it's very important hey. to oh, it's, it's very important to add um uh, to label all toolbar. the the graph elements and the chart elements so that persons with uh using who are using screen reader are able to understand i'm not able to navigate through any any part of this graph i'm not able to know any elements of it because it's uh it's unlabeled and even if it has data i wouldn't be able to navigate through it if it's not correctly labeled Freezes again. So, um, I really apologize for that. Sorry, 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 yeah. but when you said it's, it's not correctly labeled, what we are re referring to, uh, what we need to, to, to do, um, you know, like uh, how to, to, to label it. That's the, okay. you know, like, sure. Yeah. You, you would right click on, on the graph element and mm -hmm. you would find an icon just like in, in Microsoft Word where you have an icon to edit the, the text or to insert captions, you would find one of the two um, uh, icons, either insert mm -hmm. captions or uh, or edit alt text, and you can you can mm, use yeah. that to label it. OK, OK, thank you. Welcome. So I, um, unfortunately, because the screen reader is not working with Excel, I have to move to the PowerPoint and I prepared desktop uh, some slides. One remote micro digital PowerPoint BBC word test doc PowerPoint digital micro BBC word tech accessible accessible and in a slide slideshow slide and as you can see I now I'm, I now activated the slideshow so I'm now on the first line and I will start reading gender parity cost 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 efficient so the first thing it reads for me is cost efficient it didn't read the slide title or the title of the slide it start reading a different uh, different uh, part of the slide. I go ahead and press down arrow again. Gender parity, responsive procurement, and PSEA, quality improvement, leverage entity expertise, impact, and 2030 agenda. 1015 services W slash highest cost avoidance, good practices, gender inclusion, environmental sustainability. Renewable energy and inclusive HR ICT. So as you can see, the the way the slide is is um, is formed um, have the wrong correct order and not the wrong focus order. So always be sure to put the um, uh, or when you are inserting your objects and the slide, be sure to to test it um, uh, with the screen reader. Um, uh, after doing it to make sure that the, the order in which the slide, uh, the objects in the slide is placed uh, will be the slideshow slide two, impact, cost of it, 10, 15, so quality, imp, increase, think, uh, good practice, leverage, disability, inclusive, gender. This is the right, this is the right one. This is the right slide with the right order. And as you can see, the screen reader is going to read the slide correctly because I, uh, the, 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 we, we have run the accessibility checker and we choose the wrong, uh, the right or the correct order for the objects in the slide. You, the, you can always find the Microsoft checker running in the background of all the Office applications, but in case that you couldn't find it, you can always uh, activate it by pressing the F6 key. Uh, and then you will move to a toolbar buttons uh, that has the spelling checker and a word count and all that. And among those buttons, you will have the Microsoft uh, checker. And uh, let me show you uh, accessible when I will and open the checker, how the window will look like. I go ahead and press F6. Pane, status bar, status bar, spell check button, accessibility checker, accessibility, toolbar, pane. Inspection results tree view. Warnings grouping warnings identify issues that can make it very difficult for. Here you have 
you have uh, uh, warnings that uh, of the things that you will have to uh, do in the document or to modify. Uh, and uh -huh. of course you, yes. Sorry, just to back up a bit, but it, the way that they find if, in case they haven't used the accessibility checker before, they would go to review the same way that you review for spelling um, before submitting anything. And on the left here, you can see the check accessibility and then that will open the menu that Heva has on the right that will tell you all the different things um, from all text to the reading order that you're covering. Yes, thank Just you so in, much. In case they can't find it or they haven't done it before. Yes, I'm so sorry. I always use the keyboard shortcuts because this is how I use the, you know, used to to activate it. So uh, thank you very much, Diego, for that. So um, that's the Microsoft uh, checker. And I also would like you to go to another website, uh, an online accessibility testing tool. If you want to test your uh, organization's website, let me open that very quick. Run dialog. Open it through Google because uh, dialog windows cannot find run dialog. Eva, can I just say something quickly before you navigate out of here? Sure. Um, if can you check that the reading order on the slide just so that people can see um, what happens and I can request control also. accessible and inaccessible. Uh, OK, let me go to the one reminder. Microsoft BBC word test inbox have a Excel trick inclusive ICT. Can you please request Inclu control? Sure, let's see if it works this time. OK. If not, I think I have the slides also. So it's green right. sharing to allow. Yeah, thank God it worked. Control. OK, so I'm going to minimize this. Accessible. And just maximize so makes the on window. The, on the main page, Do if you tips, go to check that check the reading order, is, is there any way to turn off the, the check screen reading. reader, Heba? Recommended. Uh, recommended. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just because me, it's a tool just bar. Let me do something. To hear yeah. and speak. Uh, just a second. I have to turn the speech off. Select synth. No speech. Window. No speech. Yeah. No, it has no speech. Yeah. Okay. Please go ahead. So if you check the the reading order on this, and basically the reading order, as Heva said, it's it's going to tell you which one of the boxes or the element is going to read in which order. So if you don't have ch have it checked, like in this case, the first thing that it's reading um, is here. And when I select it, I don't even know what it is. It's an object. Then I select this other one. It's going to read these free form. And what it's going to read, it's literally free form 13. So it's an object from the design of the, of the slide that has no relevance, right? So what I can do is if I unclick it, then it's not going to be read anymore. It's marked as decorative. Um, and you can see it marked it here as decorative. And then it won't read it, right? So this other object, because I don't know what it is, I don't see anything highlighted. I, I see something here, but I unclicked it. And you can go all the way down to the ones that are and are important. So in this case, the first thing that it's reading is cost efficient. So it's not the title. So I want to go down here and search for the title. Um, and I don't see it right off the bat. I don't know if anybody sees it. Let's see if it's OK. So it's all the way down here. So it's going to read the title um, at the end. I think you click back on the. Um, on no, the I didn't do anything. I'll just I didn't do okay. anything. <laughs> Something happened. All right. Um, I think it was just the. It got clicked. Yeah. So technically, the title should be at the top, right? Because that's the first thing you you want somebody with a screen reader to hear, as opposed to just hearing you know random pieces of information all over the place. Imagine if it's a, like a sequential thing that you wanted to know. They're going to be hearing. <laughs> the title last and, and it's just going to be really difficult to know what's being told. So what I do is I just grab the title and I think it grabbed it. Maybe not. Um, you would technically drag and drop, right? So you would drag where the title is and put it. I don't think it's working here, but you would bring yeah, it all the way the up screen, to the top. Would you like me to turn it off? Turn the I mean, screen reader off. That or or I can at some point I could also share, but basically I think people get the idea that you can start clicking here and rearranging so that the basically drag and dropping so that the order is correct. So when you go here to the second slide, I think I um somehow lost control of the of the presentation. Oh, Maybe it, it froze. I'm sorry. It's yeah. okay. It froze. Um, if you can go to the next slide and just check the reading order there, and then we can see that that's correct and everything's been unclicked. The title has been put at the top, and then sequentially, however you want it, you would put cost efficient, 
as second, so to speak. Third, it would be the description of cost efficient. Then if you wanted to go to quality improvement and, and so forth. Um, and I think also we were kind of having this discussion about how to mix to make it visually appealing and at the same time kind of content rich and accessible. Um, so in this case, this is a very inaccessible format that we're thinking of, of redoing because of this exercise. Um, and there's different ways that we could do it where it could still be appealing with the icons and the colors, but that you know the text boxes may be read all at once so that it's easy and you don't have to kind of like jump around and not get an idea of what's going on. Um, is there any way to click really quickly to the second slide, Heba? I'm not sure uh, what this. Uh, I don't have any speech so feedback. So okay, let let me um, request control again. Is it possible that you can toggle yeah. with the screens and I can let you know which one to select? Okay, this one. Am I on uh, the right? No, no. Keep going. Oh, I I got control again. It seems for a second. Yeah, I have control again. Okay. Okay. Good. So you you can he see here. Um, maybe something had gotten deselected. Um, can you toggle back to the PowerPoint because it's now on on Teams? Like this? Am I on the one, one more? Yeah, one more. There. Yeah, just select that one. So you can see here that all the objects that aren't relevant have been unselected, and then the order has been kind of rearranged so that the title is read first, and then it goes to the text box, which is this one, the cost efficient, and so forth. So then it has kind of like a a linear sequence, and you can actually hear uh, the way that you want to present it. So anyway, just wanted to go a, a little in depth about that because it's something that I, I learned recently and I thought like, oh my God, I'm presenting a slide that if you're just hearing it, it's all over the place and it's it's really inaccessible. So, so it's that, and I think you will speak about creating alternative text for images as well in a second. So I'll yes. hand it over to you. Thank you. OK, so when you want to um, uh, select the alternative text to describe your image as an object, uh, be sure to um, choose a language that is clear and concise and to the point as possible. Do not exceed one line of the text alternative and do not use words like image depicting, image showing, because the screen reader is going to go ahead and say that this is an image. So you don't really need to type in the word image uh, depicts on the on the alternative uh, text dialog box. Um, and also one more thing is that the, um, the, the, the accessibility checker that you've seen just now is not accessible for a person with screen reader to work with it. So for instance, if you are going to send in a presentation for a screen reader user, be sure to check it yourself before sending it in, because even if I have it and I was trying to modify the reading order or I try to um, sometimes the, the this uh, the free screen reader would freeze when I when I uh, right click on an uh, on an object and trying to add an alternative text. Um, the, the commercial screen reader can provide an automated image description. Um, uh, for for the uh, for for the for the visual content, but you cannot rely on the automatic um, automatic visual uh, description feature because it of course it might not be correct. So always uh, always uh, try to add alternative text to your uh, text boxes, to your pictures, to your to your objects, and be as clear and concise as possible. And we always use the present tense like um, and use the present the verb in the continuous like uh, person running person walking like like that we always use the present tense um the continuous tense okay um should i now go to the to the online tool that is used to assess your website because this is really a uh, very handy well, let me just try to no i, I don't know how to <laughs> work the screen reader yet do you have to restart to get the screen reader running again? I'll try one one more time. If I couldn't, uh, then yeah. So there it is. It says no speech. Can no, you it's uh, is that it on... option there. No, it's still in no speech. So the first option, Windows One Core Voice, is it saying keep toggling the radio button or the? Uh, uh, it says Microsoft Speech, eSpeak, NG. 
I, I, I need Microsoft Speech. Am I now in the Microsoft yeah, Speech? That's Microsoft Speech API Thank version. You. Accessible yeah. and inaccessible. Swap. Finally. <laughs> OK, <laughs> you mentioned the experience of a person with visual impairment who is navigating a computer with the screen reader not running. It's like a curb cut. It's, it's uh, people call it an electronic curve cut when you have something inaccessible and no screen reader running. OK, let me go to the um, run. Run dialog type selection removed. And just I think it's an example English, of how run. frustrating it can be Heba, to not dup, have dup, the dup, proper technology dup, dup, and how M. really you untied loading. Yes, it, it can it, 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 not only not see, but not work or operate, and, and it's quite um, challenging yeah, for sure. It is, it is very frustrating. Google document. Now I opened Google. I'll go ahead, and this is one uh, feature of that the screen reader has. I'll go and press, uh, go ahead and press E to move to the edit box. Search landmark, search, search start landmark. Start typing in the search string. It's called web aim. Double E, B, sp A, I, M. Loading, loading, complete. Search modes, showing result, main landmark, clickable search results, clickable web result with side links, clickable web aim, web accessibility in mind, heading level three visited. Yeah, that's it. Loading page, loading complete. So this online uh, website provides you a ch an opportunity to type in your the, the website of uh, your preference, whether it's a professional or personal website, and it will give you a quick overview of the main accessibility errors in this on this website. It's it's an automated tool, so be mindful that it's not going to pick up um, all the errors correctly, but at least it's a starting point for any uh, person who wants to make sure that the, their organization's website is accessible, is to go to, uh, to tools like this. And there are uh, tools available also in Google Chrome and in Microsoft Edge and the develop uh, in the uh, in the developer tabs where you can always do this uh, so the same function banner land uh, so I'll go search ahead landmarks and content info landmark website address Con I'll go ahead and type in the website address of the BBC which I used www.bbc.co.uk loading page wave report Loading complete. So now, um, supposedly, when the website has it, it has two two main components, um, it it gives me the errors and the alerts. And of course, the errors uh, they are major accessibility uh, barriers, and the alerts are just minor accessibility barriers that, if fixed, will make the uh, browsing experience more effective to persons with visual impairment. So I really uh, encourage you to just go ahead and and use this online tool and type in your uh, the website of any website of your preference and check. It will give you. Um, um, an overview about the main accessibility issues like the color contrast, the page structure, the alternative text, and you can just have an, an overview about um, the main accessibility features that you might find on your website. And do you have any questions? No, I don't see any new questions on oh. the chat. Yep, we have. Hello. One question. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, are you going to share all these uh, online tools like um, in the chat so that we could try them or um, later on? Because, like for me, I, I I I'm actually listening in, so I don't know if you could share them in the chat. Yes, sure. I can share the web aim uh, plug website in the chat definitely. So, okay, and, and do we also have a recording of this session? Yes, it, we will uh, publish it, upload it on YouTube as soon as it becomes available and as soon as we have the bandwidth, because you know how busy it is, we might be a little bit delayed in doing this because of all the webinars. The webinars are really compact that we're currently doing at the moment, but we are okay. trying our best to uh, upload it as soon as possible. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so um, uh, so now uh, can I stop a screen share, Diego? And you can please continue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me. Accessible, inclusive ICT, inclusive ICT.
No, it's, it is very hard uh, for a person who is not a screen reader user to to hear to hear the screen reader talking all the time. It it, it sometimes it's quite difficult, but uh, for for a person with uh, with a visual impairment, of course, it's a saver lifesaver. OK, so in the next slide, it discusses mainly what is assistive technology. And as you as you um, as you have seen in the last exercises, uh, we have gone through that that the assistive technology is used to enable users to work around their challenges as any tool or device or software or equipment that help um, uh, people um, um, overcome their impairment or work around their impairments and challenges. Um, and all of us, technically, all of us use assistive technology at some point. We all use glasses, which is a type of assistive technology. Uh, we all use home equipments, um, which is another type of assistive technology. So um, for for persons with disabilities, um, assistive technologies, uh, we have a number of assistive technologies like screen readers. We have Braille devices that are connected to the computer and is able to uh, to um, display all the content in Braille for users who have uh, deaf blindness. We have a screen magnification software uh, that would enable the users to navigate uh, the, the computer screen uh, using a uh, enlarged uh, software that enlarges the screen. And unfortunately, because of the time, uh, we might not be able to go ahead in all the slides I've prepared. So. Um, we will be sharing it with you, and uh, all, uh, and uh, I, I'm I'm ready to answer any kind of questions or comments that you might have, because the um, the 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 slides explain that not only persons with with visual impairments need the web and the content accessibility, but also persons with hearing impairments, cognitive impairments, and um, um, and persons who are neurodiverse. Uh, we all we all uh, need. Um, web uh, con digital content accessibility uh, i want to give time to uh, to our uh, colleagues from montenegro to present their experience about the ict uh, and digital tools assessment that they uh, conducted as they conducted a very comprehensive assessment and i'm very glad that they are here with us today to share their experiences so over over to you Rosa. thank you heba i mean um I prepared quite a comprehensive um, presentation of the report of the ICT accessibility and, and digital accessibility um, within the project that we that is financed by the DCO. We uh, engaged the um, <clears throat> organization with persons uh, of persons with disability. Two of them actually, youth, uh, uh, youth uh, with. Um, Youth of Montenegro with Handicap and uh, Union of Blind to, con to conduct um, uh, physical accessibility of the common premises and uh, and the access ICT accessibility of UN agencies residing uh, in the in the Montenegro. Um, it was, I mean, really a very, very uh, bumpy road for all of us because none of us had any kind of experience in all of this uh, from the um, writing of the TORs to contracting NGOs really it was it was quite uh, quite demanding and quite but now we are there we are having the the report i mean the lots of things that have presented here really you can find it in our report i mean it seems that nothing in our <laughs> in the un system in montenegro is not accessible so really somehow it's 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 embarrassing in one way, but from the other side, uh, really it was eye opener for all of us, and it 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 was it is obvious that we have to do something about that and do it immediately. So I can mm, go briefly, you know, like uh, through the slides, just to 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 you know mm, go uh, very very uh, fast because you know, like I'm aware of the of the timing, it's quite 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 um, late now in I think all offices that are um, can you can you go on the on the slides I don't know who is having the the, the who is having the, the access I mean the scope of monitoring was um, was the um, all websites and the social networks among the list of UN agencies that reside in Montenegro 
I mean, the methodology really was the user experience. Um, uh, Diego, I'm not sure uh, because maybe I can, uh, you know, like if you give me the access that I can navigate the the the, the slides because it's lots of the, lots of them and some I really will skip in, sure. in the second. Um, in the second. You can either yeah. request control or you can share from your end or however mm -hmm. way. Oh, let me just um, just to find where is request control because now I just a second. Um, requ uh, uh, request control from my side, it's it's uh, it's um, enabled, disabled actually. OK, so you can tell me and I can move through, I guess. Uh, OK, OK, then. Uh, so I mean, uh, this slide actually uh, gives the overview of agencies and uh, their relevant websites, what has been ex actually assessed by the by these two NGOs. Um, a methodology really that we were using was the user experience as assessment. Uh, definitely, people, the members of of these two uh, organizations, really physically were in our our offices for um, assessing the um, for example software that we are using for um, finance you know like in the UNDP and and uh, in the in the UNICEF the other of uh, the other agencies um, didn't give the access to this data but we share with them access and I can say the the one that using UNICEF is completely inaccessible um, the software that is using the, the UNDP is accessible. Um, um, the, the sites, now I'm going to focus on the site sites that were reviewed were in detail in order to provide quantitative and qualitative data for each individual reviewed site based on the questionnaire with predefined questions. Um, uh, creation of uh, questionnaire was really predefined in in the in the um, you know like in the co cooperation of these two 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 organizations, and according to the international technical standards, um, um, the questionnaire contains two group of the questions. One of the related in general to the accessibility of the site, but the other was uh, related to the accessibility of the documents. Um, and um, I mean, they were doing the things that actually um, uh, HEBA was doing now. Basically, they were doing there on all of our, our websites and social medias. Um, next slide, please. I mean, it's it's uh, it was really, you know, like uh, it took uh, took almost month to complete uh, to complete this assessment, but then we got the list of uh, findings and recommendations, um, and um, I can uh, really run through them. I mean that none of our websites uh, have um, explanation of accessibility options. Um, which is according to them and to have a really necessary to have it. Uh, then we don't have any place on our website when you can find information of uh, the accessibility standards. Mm. Um, none of the websites has accept accessibility options in relation to all the elements that need to be implemented. Mm, just while um, Heba was presenting now uh, this, these tools, I was just checking units of global website. Really, I was a bit embarrassed. The, um, you know, like this, this web, this tool that you said, uh, show us uh, before, you know, like really it has, it has so many errors. I'm not going to talk about the, the other alerts, but um, it, you know, like just the front page had like 60 errors really, you know, like, um, and it's really embarrassing for the organization this size, but well, I mean, definitely we are going to do something, but also it can come has to change from we will use two approaches bottom up and uh, um, top down, you know, like your order to, to do it because obviously, you know, like the, the country offices websites, but also the, the global websites are not really accessible. Um, next slide, uh, next slide, um, Diego, thank you. 
uh, then also they were doing, you know, like uh, making the, the the reference to the graphic elements, banners, photos, um, and most in most cases these are really not uh, not uh, um, accessible. Uh, they're actually, they are not described in an appropriate way. Heba was saying um, about that before, you know, about uh, labeling them and using this alternate text modality uh, option. Um, I mean, um, they were they were really going in details, you know, different websites, what uh, what is you know what is good and what is not good, and giving recommendations for all of them. Uh, um, this is also the continuation of the of the the same 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 uh, things. Uh, also, some of the uh, of the um, websites are having these options for the asking the questions on the websites. However, you know these um, uh, also the question ask via polls and voting modules, uh, but these are in the most cases were not accessible uh, for the users of screen reader uh, reader. So you know, like um, they are giving the suggestions and recommendations what should be done in that case. Uh, also, you know, like the um, um, uh, the accessibility of form elements on the website in a special place, which can be filled in using the keyboard, shouldn't be able in all websites. Uh, then they are referring to the links that we are having on the on the um, websites. You know, like uh, we have that uh, urge. You know, like when we want to share the link, you know, we just make the reference, make the, the, the text appearing here. Link is fine here, but actually it, it's one of the of the suggestions that they said, you know, like instead to putting the link and hyperlink to the link, you know, like or here and then hyperlink to the here to put the descriptive as much as possible. What is link for? Uh, then mm, lots of details, lots of technical questions really that that we really need to, to to work on in in the future. I mean, we were a bit worried when we got this 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 report and a bit depressed, all of us, because really we wouldn't even imagine that we were so bad. That's the that's the that's the thing. Um, then also they made the reference uh, of the documents that they um, that we were uploading, and this is something that we actually can do the 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 fastest improvement. Um, like uh, Heba was now explaining um, how you making uh, a document accessible, whether it's uh, Excel, PowerPoint or or um, Word. You know, this is something that all of us, all of us immediately can start using because all of our softwares that we are using, Microsoft have these uh, features embedded. That's the one more thing that uh, uh, staff members were not aware of these things. You know, like we we are uh, we do not know what we have, and if we know, we don't know how to use it. That's the that's the thing, and uh, and really that uh, that one of the activities that we want to do in relation for this project is actually it's it's a training of the staff. You know, like that uh, everybody every document that it's it's it comes from the from the UN organization whether internal or externally doesn't matter has to be uh, has to be accessible 100% that's 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 what we agreed on the UN city level in Montenegro so it will take time it's uh, the cultural change i think it's the how you know like it's very hard to change the things the way we do our job but this is not negotiable in any on any level so you know like that's the that's the what we are going to do uh, quite now and already you know we in 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 our on the OMT level we are doing some things you know like preparing preparing colleagues especially from the from the um, communication teams you know that that uh, you know that they are uploading the documents on the on the websites because it's the face of the of, of our organization but but also for the colleagues who are just doing uh, uh, um, preparing internal documents because in the in the case that um, heba comes to our office probably she wouldn't be able to read 95 percent of documents that we that we produced uh, the next next slide please um 
um, when it comes to the to the to the software that we are using, you know, like um, they they were they are giving you know like. Um, uh, um the, they're giving suggestions what kind of software can we uh, can we use them like um, Hiba said you know every option on the application needs to be uh, accessed via the keyboards so we already uh, influenced development of, of some um, uh, some applications that we have in the in the for the program that we you know like immediately uh, addressed this issue in the project that we are preparing for the for for some of the of the implementing partners um also you know like like i said like i said uh, you know like that uh, for us for example um, colleagues with a visual impairment could not work in the finance and the in the hr in in unitive because uh, the software that we are using heavily and you know like it's our business application uh, sap it's completely inaccessible and uh, um it means when when the when um, you are you know going by tab through the different spaces in the in the sap you know like it doesn't say anything it's it doesn't recognize the screen reader really doesn't recognize anything that it's in our and uh, just to notice that um, to give the comment that sap is one of the most expensive softwares for the for the uh, accounting so so this is something that we have to have to you know like address this is should be addressed on the on the level of the organization on the manager of the organization as a, as a country office we can't do much about that but we can do about how we are design our our uh, websites how we are design our social media and how we are design our our um, documents that we are producing on daily basis um and can you skip to the last uh, slide, Diego? Mm, they also g gave us the the um, source and materials with guidelines. You know, really lots of these things that that uh, Heba was uh, talking about. You know, like you can find uh, documents on these links. Um, how you can uh, make your Word uh, document accessible, accessible PowerPoint, accessible uh, Power uh, social media, uh, then um, accessible online meeting toolkit, uh, accessible video toolkit. Uh, this is something that has, I mean, I don't know, probably there is something better, but this is something that has been shared with the Union of Blinds of Montenegro. And really, you know, like I checked uh, several of these websites and they are having so, so much, uh, so much uh, um, uh, useful informations uh, and these informations can be used as of now. I mean, that's the that's the it's easy to access. It's easy to read is digestible. It's not too technical. So uh, whoever using the computer, you know, like and using computer word document, it's very easy to make it to make it uh, to make it accessible. This is from my side. I mean, I hope that I was not too too boring. You know, like it's it's and you know, like uh, I'm, I was a bit stressed about this presentation because this is not my cup of tea to say that way. I'm a finance person, and somehow we we came to the ICT and uh, web accessibility. It uh, was pushed in my 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 uh, lap, but I'm I really learned quite a lot through 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 all of this. Uh, this is from my side. If colleagues are having any kind of questions, I'm here to to, to answer. Thank you, Seka, so much for the experience that you've had and just everything that you're finding out and all the work and gaps that need to be addressed. Um, yeah. I think it's eye opening and also in a way knowing that we have to move along the journey in some way and at least starting and knowing. All the gaps may help us kind of start on the journey or kind of address the most important things. Um, yeah. I, yeah, if, if anybody has any question for Seka um, or Heba, I know we're almost out of time. Welcome also to stay in conversation with us if there's anything that we can support. I know there's a TOR that has been prepared for doing the ICT assessment of your different digital assets. Mm that can be shared and also used if, if you need or you're in that stage of your process um, or if you need also help prioritizing which which of the things you can uh, actions you can address directly um, we're here to support um, have us here to support fully on this and this is her area of expertise 
Um, I don't see any questions. You can also feel free to unmute yourself or just speak up if, if you have anything else to say. Um, and if not, I think I, we have one last topic, right, to cover, Heva, which is the um, inclusive ICT hosting accessible online meetings, uh, which is a little different, but I, it's something that we do all the time and just making sure that we kind of address the, the main things. Yes, Diego, so please uh, everyone feel uh, free to register to the our last uh, training in the series about hosting accessible online meetings. I'm sure that uh, you will have a lot of questions and a lot of points to discuss. And um, I'm I'm uh, I'm really really glad to uh, if, please feel free to reach out to me if you need any uh, questions if you have any questions about uh, web accessibility because the topic is huge and it's very and content accessibility in general digital accessibility it's a topic that is very hard to cover in one and a half hours so um, I tried my best uh, but if you please feel free if you have any questions uh, please feel free to reach out to us and also we have an, an online uh, feedback forum please uh, please uh, Diego if you could please share it with with us so that uh, we they can really um, uh, fill it uh, because we as you as you always say we we always uh, um, are very keen on receiving your responses and to, so that we can improve the the, the trainings that we are offering. I'll share it in the chat and also in a follow up email to everybody that participated and registered. Um, and we look forward to having you and also to know that even though it's it's daunting, I mean, disability inclusion is very diverse, uh, mostly in digital accessibility. We covered um, some of the um, disabilities. There are many others and many that perhaps, like as you were saying, even with the gaps, um, some disabilities could work with the with the systems that are inaccessible if they don't have a visual impairment uh, primarily. Um, but I, I guess also some of the cognitive impairments also that we covered. Um, but we look forward to continuing this conversation and to be able to to create more inclusive and, and to keep more and more making the UN an employer of choice um, slowly but surely. So thank you yeah. for joining. Just yep. can I say one more thing when it comes when you uh, men, uh, mentioned mental disability for that uh, I mean you know like um, it's very hard to make the assessment of the premises and of the systems for these kind of things you know like the none of these organizations that we were working with were comfortable to make the assessment and to prepare report for that. You know in our country it's still um, a huge discussion of what is defined as a mental disability, you know, and for them really they were quite, quite, um, you know, like persistent about that, that they are not going to do it, you know, that they are going to do for the visual impairment, hearing impairment and um, and then, you know, like ICT and uh, physical accessibility of the premises. But when it, when, it, when it comes to the mental disability and cognitive, really, for them, it was really, really somehow gray area. They were not feeling comfortable. And how I, you know, like understood the even the, the from the countries in the in surroundings, uh, the NGOs who are dealing with the with the with the, I mean, the the organization uh, with persons uh, with disability were not keen to do something like that. And I mean, this is this is that something has to be addressed. I think from the from the top. Because uh, I don't think in in the small countries like Montenegro, especially that there is uh, any kind of OPD or institution that it's able to do the assessment um, for the persons with uh, uh, mental disability of our uh, systems. You know, that's the, something that really has to be taken into account. Do you mean to assess the accessibility of uh, access you know? as access the premises? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. because when we were doing, you know, like, um, I mean, um, there is a there is a, in the TOR, you know, that should mm -hmm. be done by the uh, four different type of of impairment in disability, physical mm -hmm. impairment, visual impairment, hearing impairment and mental impairment yeah. of disability for the mental imp impairment. Nobody was able to do it here in, in Montenegro. Okay. And they uh, even if they know something about that, they are not really um, they are not keen to provide the report official report on that. Okay, 
we'll, we'll see if we can put you in touch with some organizations that work regionally for that. And I think some of the things can be done remotely. So they can yeah. tentatively kind of work on, on some of those things, like whether it's lighting and it's noise and, and a couple of other yeah, things. Yeah, this is something that, we, that, in, that we know about, you know, for mm -hmm. example, if it's, it, you know, like for autism and, you know, like these kind of things that we know because yeah, we are the, coming. Yeah, require, uh, uh, require some uh, modifications. Uh, yeah. Than, uh, yeah, but I, um, I'm ready to provide support as much as I can um, mm. in that. Yeah. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to me and uh, I'm ready to help in any way I yeah. can. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but this is something for the colleagues. Um, I mean, I don't know whether the colleagues from other country offices uh, already start with the assessments, you know, but this is something this is th that's the area that actually can be tricky, you know, to find anyone to do it. And then it's better, you know, like uh, to, to engage somebody with your support, you know, to do th this type of assessment. Sure, sure. No, yeah. thanks for the sure. feedback, Seka. And I think it's, yeah. it's it speaks about the, the diversity and, and the journey yeah. and the long journey are the many things that need to be addressed and considered for sure. Yeah. Um, but we look forward to, to continuing <laughs> the conversation yeah. and the journey. So, uh, yeah. so thank yeah. you for joining us. Thank you, everybody, also for sticking around. Um, thank you, Heba, for all your time and resources. Um, yeah. And we'll stay in touch for the next webinars. Thank Have a great you. day. Thank you. Bye. Thank Thank you. You. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.